Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Smite Updated Beginner's Guide to the Solo Lane. Now, in this particular episode, I am going a little bit off script and I am playing Guan Yu in the Solo Lane very specifically to talk about why Guan Yu and certain other warriors with a similar, uh, what I call danger ability, uh, to, you know, how to react to them a lot of the times, and also to answer Fear the Hammer's question of how to deal with Guan Yu. The best way I can approach how to deal with Guan Yu is by playing him and talking about what I, as a Guan Yu player, like to see and do not like to see my opponent doing and being in any given scenario. So that's why I'm playing Guan Yu here. Uh, also to explain why I build him so differently from a lot of other warriors, because the way I build Guan Yu is quite substantially different from how I typically at least start with a lot of other warriors. My start with Guan Yu is a lot different from how it, how I would start with literally every other warrior. This match is also very important because this is the clearest demonstration. I think I will create this meta, this year at least, that demonstrates the goals of the solo lane. Because I feel like a lot of the times when people play the solo lane, they just see it as, oh, you know, this is basically a personal boxing match. And, you know, I'm fighting the opponent 1v1 and best man wins, right, basically? That's how I've noticed some people see this. It's not really your goal. It is important for you to win your boxing matches, so to speak, but it is not your solitary goal. This is also going to be a really interesting discussion on the best way you as a solo laner can deal with a dysfunctional team, since my my random teammates here don't get a get along particularly well in the early game, and that winds up indirectly translating to the late game. You'll see what I'm talking about, but this is the clearest demonstration of what it means to be solo lane, as well as why Guan Yu is a problem, and some ways in which you can deal with the problem, because you're actually going to see the Ardeo, who I correctly guess at this point is going to be my landing opponent. I'm looking at this team, and Arteo makes the most logical choice to place in the solo lane, so I'm assuming it is her, and in fact I am correct in this. But the Ardeo, despite theoretically being a good matchup against Guan Yu, she makes a lot of errors in her gameplay that I'm going to talk to you about, and what she should have been doing to better fight against me, okay? But that's sort of a TLDR of this video, and I'm kind of giving you this forewarning because this this is going to be quite a long video. The match itself winds up being 40 minutes. It didn't need to be. It could have been 5 to 10 minutes shorter if my allies had communicated better, but communications had already broken down by this point. Uh, by that point, excuse me, so we don't really get our act together as well as we should have in the late game until communications become reestablished. And this is also going to, I'm going to probably talk a little bit about communications on the team as a result, because the poor communication amongst the rest of the team does in fact really hurt our ability to win the game as quickly as we should we do win but it is very clearly not as quickly as we should have won and that is purely due to communication breakdown all right so kind of a forewarning here that this is going to be a long episode i know youtube doesn't necessarily show you the length of episodes anymore uh length of excuse me the length of videos anymore i say episodes because that's what i format all my stuff in it doesn't always show you how long an episode is i've noticed that on my for you page uh for youtube basically or my recommended videos as it's actually called but uh it's uh it doesn't show me the time stamps anymore you know the the actual amount of time the video takes this is going to be a long one so just kind of be forewarned that it should have been shorter for one thing um, but let's talk about what I'm thinking about at this point beyond the RDO. So, f actually, let me first talk about the RDO because, again, I'm a Guan Yu solo laner right now. I know that uh, RDO has a stun, so she can stun me out of Taolu Assault, which 
is a concern that is my primary source of damage and wave clear. She also has access to two separate heals, two great forms of wave clear, and decent amounts of damage. I also know that her passive is going to cause her to be able to drain away, or I say drain, drain isn't quite the right word, uh, diminish my protections. She diminishes them ultimately by, I think, it's, I think it's like 24% or something like that. I can't quite remember the, the total that it is right off the top of my head right now. It's been a little while since I've played RDO, but she does take away protections, so I am also aware of the fact that I'm going to have to adjust for that at some point here. That's what I'm thinking of in my mind. The rest of the enemy team composition is fairly standard, other than Raditoskir as the likely jungler and Janus as the likely mid. I have to keep in mind that they will be able to get... Uh, also, Athena, for that matter. All three of these will likely be able to move to my lane in a very short amount of time, so I have to be very aware of potential surprise ambushes. Raditoskir has his ult, which I might not see. Janus has his ult, which I will see a little bit before impact, basically. And then Athena has her ult, which I will also see a little bit before impact. But all three of these can very quickly get to my lane in a very short amount of time. So that's something I am thinking of as a solo laner. Besides that... I'm not really too concerned about anything else, really. It's just those three's alts. The rest of this is fairly standard form. No, nothing else particularly surprising, other than, of course, Ratatoskr will also lower my protections. So combined with the RDO, this could be a serious threat. But that's something I will deal with in late game, and it will depend on how people do. But it's something I'm kind of making a mental note of at this particular point in time, all right? So let's actually move forward to the actual match. I grabbed Taolu Assault. I'm going Warrior's Axe now. First off, I think this is fairly noisy. Uh, what are we at volume level? Yeah. Let's diminish this volume level a little bit here. Let's do a test here. The tool of a wolf. Uh, let's bring this down to 30. Really quick. Uh, no, we'll bring this down to... 25 I think would be good. Anyways, you'll notice the first I that I'm picking up Warrior's Axe here. Alright, this is not accidental. Now, I've mentioned before how I generally prefer Warrior's Axe, but Bluestone tends to also be very good on Guan Yu. I'm going with Warrior Axe here specifically because I've already made a mental note of Ardeo and Raditoskir's ability to take away protections. In order to require less adjustment in the late game, I build Warrior's Axe here, so that way, later on in the game, I can upgrade that, get more protections, and have a bit more uh, choice in what I build in the late game. Okay, that's why I'm building Warrior's Axe here. This is basically sort of pre-prep work for the protection reductions I know are going to be a problem in the late game, or are very likely to be a problem. Okay, so off I go, I'm running to the blue buff, obviously, I'm basically just wondering. The only thing I'm really looking at right now and thinking about besides, um, you know, Warrior's Axe as a pre-prep for late game is I'm wondering what start the mid and the jungler are going to be using because that's going to be a fairly good indication of what the l opponent is going to likely do because if they start at red and then the jungler comes back to yellow that means I can expect reinforcements and I can be a bit more aggressive in the early game. If they start yellow then I have to play a bit safer in the you know in the first couple of levels right for the first wave or two I'll have to play a little safer so I'm kind of curious as to where they're starting it looks like they're going to be starting red so that's generally going to mean that the jungler is going to go from red to yellow to the harpies to right lane so I can probably afford to be a bit more aggressive on the first couple of waves so that's something I'm very specifically noting here that's basically the reason why that start exists okay it's something I'm going to keep an eye on, but it's my general expectation at this point. Okay, so, you know, right now I'm carefully watching this timer because if I time things right with Guan Yu, I get a free bonus hit, and I start winding up for the AoE portion. I hit the first two, but not the third one, so I take one extra hit. It's not really a big deal. It's eight damage, not a huge problem. I did well enough where I'm obviously done with the camp well before RTO is. And I'm kind of thinking about warding, but she shows up there, and of course this is confirmation. Now, she makes a mistake right away. She lets me poke her. Considering how far ahead I am here, 
you know, how far up in the lane, that wasn't really going to make a difference in terms of minion aggro, but I also have just now registered mentally, hey, she let me poke her, she probably will let me poke her in future. Alright, so I'm just, which, again, as I stated before, Guan Yu wants, see, look how full my Fearless is right here. This is what I want to see as Guan Yu. She's pressing me a little bit early, I want to just clear the waves right now, because she's got two abilities, so I don't want to fight her quite yet and deal with that, get Warrior's Will, now I want to fight her because now I have minion advantage, right? Now, she's made a second mistake here, not in going for the minions. She came back, and I'm actually going to go back 10 seconds to talk about, actually, I'll go back 20 seconds to talk about this. So, she lets me poke her, that's fine, but it shows that she's psychologically willing to let me do so, and it's weird to talk about psychology and smite, but let's be honest here, psychology is omnipresent. But it shows me that she's willing to let me get away with poking her, which, again, is a dangerous thing to do for a, a, when you're against Guan Yu, very specifically. And she uses her ability here. Now, what she does, and I'm not sure why she does this, necessarily. If I had a knee-jerk, you know, expectation of what was going through her mind right now, I would have to say probably she was expecting that, oh, he's being hit by all these minions... And let me come back and see if I can pressure him away from the wave. And she does pressure me away from the back half of the, the wave. But, you know, I just go for the front half. I get some more poke on her. She lets me get that. I finish off the wave with Tolu Assault. And she now goes for the minion wave. Again, I have minion advantage. She is losing a lot of health. Here comes Thor, just as I expected. He's looking for that kill. He picks this up. Now, I'm kind of surprised he gets that. I'm going to be really honest. I didn't go forward with him because I, I thought she was going to get under tower in time. She didn't. I'm, I'm very surprised. But she died there because she came after me. She broke off from attacking the wave for a little bit to attack me for some unholy reason. Right? Now, this is actually the whole attack the minions thing you just heard. This is the beginning of... This is a bad sign for me. All right? This sends the message that Maui is unhappy with Hachiman. So we could see some dissension here. But Maui is not the one in which the communications break down. At least he's not the source of it. But keep this in mind. Uh, so I'm going to go on ahead and continue clearing the wave. I whip an auto attack there somehow. I'm not sure how. But now I'm ahead of the RDO. Not by a lot. By, I would say probably a whole level at this point. She was probably three quarters of the way. Roughly speaking, maybe two thirds of the way. I'm going to go ahead and clear this scorpion because I have time to do so. Again, solo lane is all about getting as strong as possible as beefy as possible to enter mid game and then just basically carry the team that's that's the dream that's the idea you know i'm done with that she comes back in she's level two now i'm assuming she stole some harpies from somewhere in the jungle i don't want to press her under tower because i'm respecting the stun here and i don't know what she's got now she's clearly got that other ability so i know that that's fine but there's a whole huge minion wave coming through and i've lost minion advantage and I'm only one level ahead of her. Now, normally being one level ahead would be a huge advantage, but because of the way I play Guan Yu, you'll actually notice I didn't pick up my heal. I don't pick up the heal in solo lane. So even though I'm one level ahead, it's just an increase in strength, right? So I don't want to press her here, or I normally would want to press her here as literally any other warrior because I'm instead investing all my points in Taolu Assaults. I back off a little bit. We clear the wave. I go on ahead and press her. I'm just trying to poke her out. She does run away as I expect her to. I was really just trying to buy time for me to get something. I was originally thinking of the blue buff. Decided to go for the totem instead because I kind of figure if I'm back going for the blue buff, she's going to take this and I don't want her to get that gold. So, you know, back we go. I go ahead and start working on the wave. And she should theoretically be able to clear faster than me. And she's clearing very slowly, but now she's got the stun, right? I can now confirm she has the stun. I go on ahead and stop suing her. She finally does. I've noticed that, hey, now she's actually competing with me in terms of clear. That's great, right? She's actually clearing the wave at a decent pace. This is more what I was expecting. That's fantastic. And now I'm going to keep on going with just clearing the wave. Now, keep in mind... I'm noticing a couple of things right at this moment. This is the moment where something really clicks with me, namely her mana. I'm confused, right? Now, she doesn't have her blue buff just as I don't have my blue buff. I'm not even remotely surprised, right? Both of our blue buffs should be up. We should both be heading back to get these fairly soon, right? 
But what's confusing me is, yes, I had the advantage of the totem, but I also have been alive the whole time. I haven't been back to Fountain. She died and came back, so she shouldn't be necessarily this hard up on mana, even with the amount of abilities she's using here, right? At least she shouldn't be this slow on mana if she built something with a lot more sustain. So I'm now confused. What has she built that is not giving her any mana restoration? I'm going to check this pretty soon. But I want to poke her out a little bit more because she's got literally zero mana. There's zero risk for me. She's still going to make it back to the tower. And it's about this point. I can't quite remember the exact moment when I check. But at some point pretty soon, I check what she's actually started to build. Because I'm thinking about right now her really low mana, which means she's building wrong somewhere, right? Because you generally want to prioritize sustain, especially as someone like Ardio who has really high mana needs, higher than average. So I'm very confused. I'm clearly too busy focusing on leveling up right now and increasing my level. I, you know, throw my point into my ult as you do. Huge source of damage for Guang Yu. Absolutely incredible for turning the tides of most fights. Absolutely great ability. She teleports back. And I think it's actually shortly after this that I try to figure out what the hell is going on with her build. I do some poke first, obviously. You know, while she's close to the edge, I'm walking away. And I can't quite remember when I open the scoreboard to check her build. Because I'm very focused. Here it is. This is when I do it. So, hold on. I'm actually blocking this with the vision shard here. Oh, come on, me. Where is it? Come on. I'd never actually check this. Oops. I went a little too far forward here. So, okay, I am going to check what she's doing here, but I apparently panic. Uh, don't want her clearing this wave. Now, the interesting thing is, because Ardio doesn't really have a literal ult, she has no advantage here. So I go on ahead and ult her, because she's nice and far out. She actually used... Now, the reason I ult there is because she very specifically uses her dash, right? So I attack her, right? She uses her dash, I ult, she cancels her dash. I'm not sure why she does so. And that kills her right there. Alright? So, you know, I'm going to go and take her Scorpion, because she's dead, and I see Ratatoskiers in mid. I know, see, actually, you can see the moment where I change my mind. See, I kill her, and I'm going to go for mine, and I see Rat here attacking Merlin, and I go for the, for her Scorpion, because I know I'm not about to get ganked by Rat. Thor is chasing Ratatoskier right now, so I'm very safe to take this at this particular moment. There is no danger to me here. So I clear that, now I'm going to go clear the wave again. Right, I'm just going to go ahead and slap some goons with uh, auto attacks. Go ahead and go for my full attack chain so I can auto cancel into this. Absolutely peak efficiency as I whiff two, uh, two auto attacks in a row. Genius. <laughs> uh, go ahead and work on this scorpion. I see my mana buff is about to come back up. It's a lovely day. I'm just trying to accelerate my level growth. I'm two levels ahead of Ardeo right now. Now I'm trying to keep ahead of Ardeo very specifically because I know if I fall behind her, she's going to be able to out-heal me. She's going to be able to out-damage me with her multiple abilities. It's going to get very ugly, so I want to stay ahead. Thora's early gank was really great, right? And the fact that Redditoskir didn't gank means Redditoskir and the Yanu started at their speed. That's what that means. Now, I failed to put a ward down there. I completely goofed that. I actually dedicated a little bit more time the second time, but you can <laughs> you can see me fail to put the ward down because I don't. I must have aimed it wrong. I was probably trying to put it in the fire giant mountain by accident. You know, I cleared the wave. She cancels her dash again. Again, I'm not really sure why. Yes, she's just cleared the wave before me, which is great for her, but I'm literally two levels ahead of her at this point. Now, this is where I'm finally checking more officially. I don't know why it took me so long to check this. Now, she's built uh, Stone of Gaia. This wasn't the move for her to make. Now, the gem is fine, right? The focus gem or whatever it's called, that's fine, right? She's a guardian. She needs a bit more damage output. Personally, I think, considering how ability-intensive Ardeo is, at least personally, I like to build the... Hourglass on her, 
in the solo lane, personally, right? But this is a respectable choice as a starter item for her because it allows her to do some more damage, which is something she's going to have, theoretically, as a Guardian, a bit of a harder time with. Again, Ardeo has literally six abilities available to her. Not as much of a concern. Four of these abilities do damage. So I've never really had a problem dealing damage with Ardeo. But what really fascinates me is the choice of Stone of Gaia on Ardeo in the solo lane. Now, I don't like this for a number of reasons. First off, Ardeo has her own form of self-heal. She's, in fact, got two self-heal abilities. She doesn't really need Stone of Gaia for health sustain. The MP5 out of this is fine, but you can get almost the same amount of MP5 out of Breastplate of Valor. Right, which actually is, in this particular case, would have been the ideal move to make with Ardeo because it would have given her 65 physical protections, which even after a, a max level Tylo Assault, a rank 5 Tylo Assault, with Fearless, that's only going to be 45, so I'm never going to be able to fully punch through that Stone of Gaia, I'm sorry, not Stone of Gaia, that... Breastplate of Valor, if she'd built that right, MP5 cooldowns for her multiple abilities to come down faster, which is, again, key to Ardeo. It gives you 65 physical protections, it gives you maximum mana, right? It allows you to heal a little bit faster. It's a really great item to begin with on Ardeo. Even if this even if this particular person, Indigo888, builds Stone of Gaia as their second item just for the same reason I normally build Soul Eater or Aussie, she, you know, you're never sure who's going to be in lane, you want something that's going to be neutral, right? Even then, a better item would have been something like Manticore's Spike to give you MP5, give you both protections, give you a passive where every time you get that, you hit that bear roar, because that's a stun, that's hard CC, you get a little spike that you can use immediately with either one of the other bear abilities to deal that damage immediately. That would have been a, another great item here. Or if you want to be doing a little bit of, you know, more aggressive damage, you could build uh, on Ardeo. A great option is Spear the Magus, right? You get some flat penetration, you get some magic lifesteal to heal yourself even more. Especially if you combine that with the... Hourglass, right? So you have the 10% cooldown from the Hourglass, you have the passive that's increasing your MP5, and because you have that Hourglass, you can maybe get away with not necessarily going immediately with MP5 by getting something like Spear of the Magus, which is going to give you that penetration, it's going to give you that passive that increases the damage the enemy is taking, including from minions, by the way. And it's going to give you 110 power. It's a great item to start with on Ardeo because she has so many different ways of ensuring that you walk away with that Spear of the Magus proc, right? So the big issue here is the fact that she's built Stone of Gaia. This does nothing for her against me, okay? That does nothing for her defensively other than give her max HP, which I'm easily burning through because Taolu Assault is taking away her default physical protections, which at this point, you know, I have the advantage of... The round shield, which gives me, I think, seven physical protections, and warrior's axe, which gives me ten, right? Take away those seventeen protections, and you're looking at a, a baseline 45 physical protections. Now, she's a guardian. She's going to have slightly higher baseline. It's probably about 50, right? When I, As Taolu Assault is currently, it, it's taking away, I believe, eight protections per hit up to three times that winds up being 24 that's that's about half of her physical protection is taken away and if i happen to have fearless that's doubled uh, no it's not doubled it's increased by 50 percent right so that goes up to 36 in that condition okay it's it's a it's a confusing purchase like the the, the gemstone i kind of understand i prefer hourglass but that's that is an equally good start item on Ardeo, but the Stone of Gaia is not something Ardeo as a character needs, and I'm confused as to why this was built, okay? Th but this is the reason why she's having a hard time against me right now, is simply because I'm... I, she's basically offering no resistance to Taolu Assault, and she's also not stunning me out of Taolu Assault either, which would help her greatly. Right, one of the key methods of fighting against Guan Yu is stopping Talu Assault. Now, because Warrior's Will decreases all cooldowns of his by two seconds, as I mentioned before in the previous episode, yes, you are always going to be a bit behind the eight ball on that Talu Assault. You're only ever going to really stop 
every other Taolu assault, but that other Taolu, the second Taolu assault, every other Taolu assault is the Taolu assault he is using to try to box you. You'll actually notice pretty consistently throughout this match, you know, up until the first tower falls, that I use one Taolu assault to clear the wave, and then the second Taolu assault I'm using to primarily damage Ardio, or I reverse these occasionally, damage her first, then go after the wave one or the other, but I'm generally alternating the purpose of my Taolu assault here, the, the goal of the Taolu assault. She could theoretically very easily stun me out of either one of these, right? Either harm my ability to deal with the wave or harm my ability to deal damage to her, right? Her choice. But that is a huge important factor in stopping Guan Yu from dominating you in the solo lane. That is one of the big moves. The other one, of course, as I mentioned before, is not letting him poke you when the waves are up. She's done neither of these things, and she's built Stone of Gaia, something she doesn't need. So I now know, at this exact moment, I have an absolutely phenomenal advantage over her because she has misbuilt. Okay? Not to say anything against Stone of Gaia, it can be a very good item. Just not on Ardio, and not against Guan Yu. Alright, it's more, again, it's all about the circumstances of the build. Now, I'm just gonna run up, and I'm just gonna absolutely attack the wave, she stuns me, she, see, that was a classic example right there of the mistakes she's making, she stuns me before I begin Taolu Assault, if she had stunned me during that Taolu Assault, I would never have been able to clear that wave, I would have had to have walked away from the wave and not cleared it, okay, she stunned me way too early, so I'm just gonna finish up Glad Shield here in my very next move, now, I'm thinking at this point I'll probably want Pestilence, right, that's what I'm gearing up for very specifically at this point, because, you know, she's got Stone of Gaia, she's got all this self-heal she's got access to. I build the Sentry Ward specifically because of all of the potential surprise ganks I'm going to be seeing. You know, I, I might be able to catch a incoming Janus ult, right? Maybe Raditas gear charges up his ult just outside the lane. Some rats do that. I'm going to need that ward coverage, right? It's going to be pretty important. Now, I know she cleared the totem. That's fine. I knew when I backed I was going to have to sacrifice something, and that was going to be it. She's still low on mana, though. So, I'm going to go on ahead and poke her out here. She's going to counter poke me, but she hits like a wet noodle due to building Stone of Gaia, quite literally. And I'm just going to clear this scorpion. Now, this is a bit of a risk here, me trying to take this, okay? I don't know where Rat is. But I am at this point two levels ahead, and she has almost no mana that I'm fairly comfortable making this attack here. Okay, even if Ratatoskir comes in at this point, I'm not too concerned. Now I walk into the wall specifically to make sure that I stay, I keep her in my radius, I kill her really quick. I'm going to go ahead and proxy the wave. Again, I'm level 9, Rat is level 7, so even if Rat comes for me at this point, I'm not concerned. I see Rat just ganked Hachiman. I now know with 100% certainty, which is why I use Taolu Assault here immediately, I now know with 100% certainty I'm not in danger, so I'm going to go ahead and take his farm over here. I can see him right now in left lane. He's still in left lane, right? And see, this is the Hachiman. Uh, this is another uh, point significant in team communications. Hachiman is making a joke that Maui doesn't like. Uh, I appreciate the attempt at humor, but unfortunately, the Hachiman is... is pressing people who are upset at him. Uh, I don't know what the situation here is. I don't know whether or not Thor is right or wrong. I have no idea. But we're, you know, you can start to see the dissension here. Uh, I'm just going to keep on... <laughs> just <laughs> just the, the interaction between these people is absolutely hilarious. But besides that, I'm just going to absolutely keep on pressing her here. Again, she doesn't stun me out of the Taolu Assault. She literally stuns me for no damn reason. I have no idea what she's thinking here. And, you know, I'm not going to press that right now because I'm running a little low on mana and I don't have my mana buff, but I still want to clear this wave, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I know she's not going to stop me at this point. She's two levels down. Uh, no idea what the hell is going on with that, but... You know, I'm just going to go ahead and press her. Again, I don't have much mana, but I don't need it. I cleared, I finished clearing the wave. We're, you know, we're doing fine. I scare her off a little bit, but then I'm like, yeah, I need mana. 
I, I almost go back for the wave, but I'm like, nah, I gotta, I gotta get this. I'm gonna have a really rough time if I don't get some form of mana. I work on that a little bit. Now, this is actually something that I don't see enough people do, is, you know, do the totem in their, your free time in the, late, in the mid to late game. You don't have to do it all in one go. I see a lot of people sticking to the totem like it's a life or death scenario. It's really not. I, I put some hits down on the totem, and then I come over here to clear the wave, because the wave needs clearing, right? There's nothing there's nothing wrong with just starting the totem and leaving it. That progress does not decrease, right? It, it stays at the same place. Now, I'm just going to come over here and finish doing the totem, because I have the time now, okay? And that's something a lot, and this is actually the part at which communications break down completely. Thor mutes... I believe the Hachiman, uh, he actually mentions specifically the Hachiman in future. So he's muting the Hachiman specifically right now. Maybe some other people, but he mentions the Hachiman later on. I'll point that out. But I have to make a mental note at this point that Thor has muted Hachiman at minimum. And we're probably going to have a communication issue, right? So just kind of keep that in mind. Again, this is very important f for you to note as a... Uh, as a solo laner, and I also want to point out the fact that I just heard Ratatosk gear in my jungle. Now, could I have gone over there and interrupted him? Possibly, yes. However, at this particular point in time, the reason why I don't want to, because I am, a, based on the fact that I heard him, he had to have been at one of these two harpies. I believe this one, probably this one, it's one of these two harpies, I'm not really sure which one. But I heard him, and I could have stopped him, right, but I didn't. Because I didn't know what condition he was in. I was half dead and half down on mana, and I didn't know where Ardio was. If Ardio was in good enough condition, she could have charged it down and helped Rat out. Yes, Thor is right there, but Thor right now... Uh, Thor is, is about the same level as Rat. Thor isn't behind or anything like that. But I, I didn't want to risk Ardio picking something up and catching up to me. Again, I'm ahead of the Ardio right now due to Ardio's mistakes, but if I take a fall now or in the near future, it wouldn't be too difficult for Ardio to turn this around and make this a much more difficult lane for me. Also, I do pick up Borg of Hope here because I am far enough ahead of the Ardio at this point that I'm really not concerned about her self-heal. I noticed that my previous fights, I absolutely was doing tons of damage to her despite her healing. I'm really not concerned about her healing at this point. Maybe later on in the game I'll be building anti-heal, but for right now, Bul Bulwark of Hope. Again, also keep in mind that one of the things that is swaying this decision for Bulwark over Pestilence is not only the ease with which I punched through the minimal healing of Ardeo, but also the very real and present danger of three members of the enemy team very easily ulting into my lane and slapping me down. That is a genuine concern still at this particular point, and the passive shield that I will get from Bulwark, should that happen, will probably save my life. Right, that is why I am purchasing Bulwark here. Normally, I would go Pestilence, but I'm so far ahead and dealing so much damage to Ardeo that I just don't see an immediate need for it, right? That is why I am not building Pestilence. I originally intended to, but I, I'm i just doing so much damage to her that I just don't need the anti-healing. So I just keep on attacking her. I'm punching through all of this. Again, she stuns me when I'm not entitled to Assault, which is a huge mistake. I poke here. This is the biz biggest example of communications breakdown I've ever seen. Now, originally, I wasn't going to ult in. I was just going to damage her, leave the lane, you know, proxy. But then I see how low she is from not only my damage, but the minions. And I just go in here, and I just am going to absolutely finish her off here. And I'm going to come out just fine. Again, this is partially because I am st stupidly ahead at this point. I just, um, two levels ahead... I'm pushing down this, this lane here. I'm level 13. It's a lovely time for me. Right? Absolutely fantastic. I'm just going to go ahead and finish this tower off here. No problem. Because what I want to do right now... Now, I, f I rush down this tower. I could stop and take her th check her mana. I could go for this scorpion for more golden experience. I could do all of these things. I take this tower because right now... I am primed to get to level 14 and get my heal, which is when I, as Guan Yu, want to start rotating when I get my heal. 
If I'd been a little bit more anticipatory, if that surrender vote had happened a little bit earlier, I would have put a point into the heal at level 13 rather than put a point into any other ability just so I would have it for this rotation. But I'm rushing down the tower because my team has really low morale right now, and I know for a fact that at level 13, at 11, almost 12 minutes, I can rotate to mid lane and absolutely dominate. I know this is very likely going to be what's going to happen. I'm going to keep on pressing. I'm pressing this minion wave right now because I want to try to hit level 14 and get a level 1 heal. First, that is my goal right now. So I've cleared the tower so I am open as a solo laner to rotating. I just want to farm first. So I take out the tower first specifically to kind of release me from lane and now I'm just desperately farming up as much as possible so that way I can get to level 14 and be fully prepared because I want that heal for rotations so that way I can reduce my cooldowns when my allies, you know, when I'm fighting alongside my allies. That is my goal. You know, Thor helps me with this. Absolutely great. We're going to split this. Also great. Fantastic. My mana buff is about to come up. I'm going to wait for it. I'm going to clear this. It's only a couple of seconds. Not an issue. All right. Go ahead and clear this. And I noticed at this point that Ardeo is now in mid lane. She's given up on her lane entirely. So I have to rotate slightly earlier than I would have liked. You'll see I'm very close to level 14, but I'm not quite there yet, unfortunately. Here's Ratatosk, here he's poking around. I'm going to mid lane just because I want to protect it against um, Ardeo. And, oh look, minion wave. Let's see if we can scare them off of this minion wave, so that way I can hopefully pull some of this experience. Now this, the ult was just an intimidation factor. It works. By the way, I hit level 14 with very little trouble. Then Thor ults in, and I'm just gonna be like, okay, let's capitalize. Let's move in on this, right? And we take out uh, Janus. Rat comes in here for a gank. Not sure what he's thinking here, but okay. You know, I'm coming in here. I'm just trying to keep people alive. I'm trying to get people out. Thor regresses. I heal. That's fine. I'm not dashing into that because I know it'll just stop me from dashing, and that's not what I want. You know, we're we're trying to get in, pick people off. We're trying to. I'm right now trying to get the team ahead. Right. That's what I'm looking for. Maui is. I don't even know what Maui's doing. Uh. Here's a Heimdall, which I was expecting, but I should have been expecting earlier. I absolutely die here, obviously. Now, I, for some reason, was not expecting that as early as I should have been. I grab Mystical Mail to increase my damage output. Again, Guan Yu works really well with this. Uh, I am trying to, right now, capitalize on my huge lead and be able to do as much as I can for team fights. But yeah, basically, I die there because, for some bizarre reason, I forgot that he uh, Heimdall existed. And he surprises me somehow. <laughs> he shouldn't have. I should have expected that. So that's a personal failing on my part. And uh, at this particular point, I'm just trying to figure out what my next move is. Now, Ardeo has moved back to right lane, which is fairly important for me because this means I basi she's basically giving me carte blanche to uh, do whatever I want in mid lane. And I am absolutely going to capitalize on that if possible. Now, I specifically teleport to mid lane so I can help push that down. I, she's way up there. You can see where I briefly thought about returning to my lane, but she's so far back away from my tower that I'm really not concerned. Maui is initi initiating on the Yanos here. Kill him off more by luck than anything else. He probably should have gotten away with that, and the fact that he didn't is kind of a shame for him. Um, honestly. But at this point, you know, Thor goes in, I'm going for the Heimdall, he dies, but you finish off the Athena, great, I'm, you know, clearing the wave, now I'm clearing the wave specifically here because I want the increased protections from Talu Assault, tank it a little bit more, my team clears the tower, because I was tanking it, Ardeo shows up wicked late, that's fine, I'm gonna cut off the, uh, Ratatosk gear here, because I knew he was gonna dash, it was very obvious, he was, he was telegraphing that very badly that he wanted to get out of there, obviously, it was a 1v4 at that point, take out the Ardeo, push down mid lane, now, this has all been a... Actually, I don't need to pause this for this. This has all been a horrific series of events just so I can try to increase the morale of my team, which I think largely succeeded. They were having a really hard time in mid lane. Their uh, communication still is broken down at this point, by the way. Thor still has Hachiman muted. But, you know, I'm level 16. 
I'm three levels ahead, we just took both mid towers, we're in a really good position, and at this particular point, I am mildly concerned about my tower, I'm actually going to try and run over there as quickly as possible to defend that, because right now it's undefended, it's being attacked by minions, it's not going to fall to minions, uh, I'm not concerned about that, I'm worried that somebody has gone over there to push that down. Uh, I see Janos, who I was mainly concerned about, is in mid lane, so I take a moment to take my blue buff, right, because Janos was the first one out after that last fight. He is, you know, obviously just in mid lane. No issues. Here I am. It's fine, right? But I, it was a genuine concern of mine at that point that I was about to lose my tower, and why is it important for me not to lose my tower here, right? I have their tier 1, why does it matter? Well, short answer is, it would help them catch back up. We're not ahead by that much. We are ahead by 1,400 gold, approximately. We're ahead by 2 kills. It's not really a substantial lead, okay? So, if they took my tower, this would kind of put them on even par. They would be a little behind in experience, but in terms of gold, they would have caught up. Um, I just want to poke out RDO here. I'm four levels ahead. I'm not really at risk. You know, it's just not really a concern. She, her dash is down. I can do whatever I want here. She finally, finally stuns me out of a Tower of Assault. She's receiving the reinforcements from um, Athena. I kill her anyways because the Athena messes that up. She should have taunted me immediately as soon as I used Tower of Assault. Lack of awareness on stopping Tower of Assault is somewhat scary to me, to be honest. Um, if that's something I want to talk about at the end of the match. I'm getting ganked hardcore here, but my allies arrive, so I'm just trying to reposition to a better place. I'm hoping the enemy team follows me. Janus absolutely slaps me with an ult. Th uh, Thor turns that around really quick. Thor stuns the Janus out. We take care of him really quick. Absolutely fantastic ult by the Thor, by the way. Just, if, if... The Thor ever sees this episode. Absolutely fantastic job there. That was an amazing... That in the very first gank. Genius moves. Absolutely top-tier jungle gameplay, honestly. So I'm going to heal up. I'm going to teleport right back in. I know Athena's waiting for me. I don't know why Athena's waiting for me here. She... That was a huge mistake on her part. She should not have been. I'm four levels higher. And I know she's probably trying to bait me into something. I'm, I'm level 17, okay? I don't care. I really don't. Right, I'm going to force her out of here. Maui's going to come in. I'm not sure why. There's really not much risk to me at this particular point in time. Right? But I appreciate the fact that he was concerned. Here's Ratatosk here. He wasn't going to threaten me either. I want to, at this point, switch over to left lane because I can see Hachiman's there. I can see Heimdall is there. Hopefully, we can save Hachiman and we can take the towers here because we're definitely, we definitely need to take these. Right? So I'm coming over here. I'm rotating. Hachiman is just here. I don't know where Heimdall is, which is my chief concern right now. And he's just apparently not here, so I want to push left lane. Uh, Thor makes a better call here of attacking the Gold Fury. Definitely the better call. I, I'm looking for more of the long-term permanent change of the towers, but the Gold Fury is definitely the better choice here. Hachiman joins me. We've got all these people out here. There is a mild risk. I want to emphasize... There is a mild risk here. Now, when I said Thor made the better call, Thor made the better call assuming Janus' ult is down, assuming Redditaskar's ult is down. Unfortunately, I'm pretty confident at this point that the enemy team knows we're trying for this. Now, the Athena makes an attempt at this, but I'm fully expecting at some point Redditaskar or Janus to ult in and potentially steal this, which is why I didn't want to go for this initially. All right. So, I, I'm, it's pretty confident that based on how long ago Janus used his ult in right jungle, probably he doesn't have that. But I don't know if Ratatoskir has his ult. We do wind up getting it. Ratatoskir does kill um, Thor. We're really trying to, you know, counterattack here. It is a bit risky for us to go into this, but I am at this point, again, stupid strong. He's got Aussie. I kind of note that. That's very important. I, I make a mental note of this now that he has Aussie. You can see the um, effect trigger. I just happen to be strong enough where it doesn't make a difference. I want to press down the towers, but of course our minions fail to kill that other tower, so we're going to come back here, kill Ratatoskir, and then take the tower. Ideally, right? So Rat gets away. I tell them to attack left lane. I'm going to go back and heal up and use a ward to come back because, again, I have that teleport. Grab Pridwin, because again, amazing item on 
uh, Guan Yu. My cooldowns are at 30% right now. You know, they back off. Fair enough. I think we probably could have taken the second tower, potentially, but I respect that they're a little cautious about it, considering how Hachiman has been received by the other people. Now, I personally did, don't have beef with Hachiman, and I still don't to this day, but I can understand their concerns and why they wouldn't push that up. Hachiman has been fairly inconsistent. I won't say unreliable, because he did an okay job fighting Heimdall before we ganked that lane. So, he has the potential, but at this particular point, he is behind and apparently makes questionable decisions based on Thor and Maui's statements. But, uh, you know, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to help him out. Now, I'm choosing to help him out over Thor, because Thor, clearly as you can tell from his health, is fine, first off, and second off, has a level on Raditoskir. So between Thor versus Raditoskir, where Thor has a one-level advantage, and Hachiman versus... Artio, with Artio having the one-level advantage, Artio is the more dangerous of the two, right? She's level 16, she's facing a level 15 Hachiman, who's already been having a rough time. She actually correctly stuns me out of my Taolu Assault. I happen to have my ult, I happen to have allies here, Rat Leaves, correct choice. Thor is ulting, and this is the only reason I keep pressing forward. You know, we're, we're kind of committing to this. There goes Janos. I'm down to continue this. He is too, apparently. We go in. I decide to switch to Janus because, quite frankly, uh, he's less likely to be able to get away at that point. I don't know why Radatoskir comes back in. I'm staying in level 19 for Pete's sakes. He does get away, barely. But, you know, at this particular point, that's fine. I'm out of here. I, I, I actually make a mistake. I thought a ward was available nearby. It isn't. <laughs> I should have been buying wards. Now, what I'm working on right now, really quick note... First off, I should have had a ward uh, down before I went back. I unfortunately forgot to buy a ward the last time I backed. That is entirely a mistake on my part. Second off, I'm working on Brawler's Beat Stick. And this is exclusive, well, not exclusively, but primarily for the Heimdall. Between Ardio's self heal and the Heimdall's uh, Aussie, I need anti healing, right? And at this particular point in time, even though I am aware of the fact that they have the ability to take away a lot of my protections via. Redditoskir's spin and Ardio's passive. I'm really far ahead. If need be, I can switch this out for more protections. But at this point in time, I want to capitalize on my huge advantage here and deal more damage, right? So at this particular point, you know, we're pressing down mid a little bit here. Now, unfortunately, and this becomes quite a problem for me, uh, and something the team doesn't deal with as well as I would like. You can see two catapults here, right? We have a catapult in the enemy right lane, and we have a catapult in the enemy mid lane. Now, as long as they're behind the phoenixes like that, they are a really effective defense against invasion, right? It's it's damn hard to take a phoenix with a catapult behind it. And if you get a catapult behind one of your phoenixes, now they trigger the middle one because the middle one's too far back behind the wall to defend that. That's the only exception. But the two side catapults are better left behind the phoenix because they're going to very much protect that phoenix from minions and make it very difficult for minions to take a phoenix by themselves incredibly difficult and even it's even difficult to take a phoenix uh, as a team right because you've, you're dealing with the damage from that catapult now i'm ulting here because i know my allies are coming in even though they're a bit far away again we're i'm very high up in level compared to the enemy team and i'm just looking at this point to kind of my goal here isn't necessarily kills. We do kill two of them here. I really just want to clear the wave for Fire Giant, right? So we've killed two of them. That's a really great thing. If we can kill a rat, we're in really good shape. We kill a rat, absolutely fantastic. Right onto that Fire Giant, right? And we're just going to keep on working on this. I use my heal to reduce cooldowns. It's a lovely time. I'm saving my dash for when I get potentially popped up. I can use the dash to dodge that. No need. You know, we grab that. It's an absolutely great time. I am concerned about the catapult in mid, but, you know, we've already lost it by that point. I assume Merlin will take care of it before it reaches this next tower. Personally, Fire Giant is more important than a tier 1 tower. So I'm fine with it. I go on ahead and grab my blue buff because I'm still using a large amount of mana. I haven't built any MP5 in my build, so I need something to compensate, and it's going to wind up being the blue buff here. 
grab my warrior's axe because I want those protections, obviously. Um, again, I am aware of the fact that some of these will be taken away from me by Ratatosk here or Ardeo. I'm going to go on ahead and pressure the Ardeo here. Technically, I should be meeting up with Merlin at this particular point in time, but what I'm hoping to do is just kind of... Well, what I was originally hoping to do was just farm up the money for Brawler's Beatstick, because I do really want that. Um, Maui pushes way deep into their jungle for some reason. I warn him specifically because I think he's out of position, but he's sticking with it. I'm just going to go in with him. Again, I'm already level 20, right? So is Thor. We have a huge level advantage at this point. We steal the speed buff. It wasn't really that important. We lose Hachiman. I'm going to go on ahead and press the Ratatoski here. I don't know if his ult is up. I take the risk. I, you know, I get rid of him. What I should have done there is actually taken out the catapult. I didn't. That's a mistake on my part. I should have taken that out. That becomes relevant later. Um, okay. Now, we're trying to take this mid phoenix, which is fine, but we don't have Hachiman, so we really shouldn't be trying this. Now, keep in mind also that the Ardeo is trying to take right lane and Thor is defending that, right? I die here because I, I goof it. Thor is defending right tower from Ardeo. You might be thinking to yourself, the Phoenix is more important than a tier 2 tower. Kind of, yes, but by Thor preventing that tower from falling, he's preventing them from getting free golden experience from the destruction of that tower, which at this point in the game is pretty important, right? Because they're still not yet at level 20, like, we're starting to hit. It's, it's not a bad idea to defend that tower. He actually has made a good choice here. Is it the optimal choice? We'll never know. I, we'll never know if that was a good or a bad choice, but... He's not necessarily wrong, right? So he's going to now move to join the team in mid lane because he's not sure what the situation is. I died, and right now I'm basically carrying the team. I have over half the team's kills. I'm hard carrying the team at this particular point in time, okay? Uh, just because of how well I did in solo lane, which was half me and half the RDO making build and gameplay mistakes. Um, that is basically what's going on here. That's how I got here right? So, you know, the team groups up. Great. You know, they're grouping up to theoretically take that mid Phoenix. Love to see it. Love to see it. This is where Thor is wondering if Hachiman is saying anything, and this is where I should have been concerned, but wasn't. I should have said something here. I thought about it. I thought about saying something. And the Hachiman pulls more jokes, right? You know, but, uh, you know, he says, you know, tell Thor I love him. I tell Thor Hachiman loves him. I'm hoping this is reestablishes communications. I should have been a bit less jokey. I should have not played into the joke here. That's my mistake. Um, but then I'm kind of concerned that if I had just been more serious with Thor and Thor gets a message from Hachiman saying I love you, that would have been a problem. Now we're inv invading this uh, phoenix. I go ahead and sacrifice my life for the phoenix. This is also where I register that Heimdall has finally reached the point where he can kill me. Which is his job, but it's been something I haven't really been paying much attention to. Now they're trying to attack the phoenix. I'm sorry, the titan here. And this is very specifically where the communication breakdown is a problem, okay? Okay. Thor still has Hachiman muted at this point, right? I don't believe he unmuted him at this point. Yeah, he has not unmuted him at this point. So, you can see Hachiman backing up here, yet at the same time, we have Maui yelling attack. Now, Thor is calling to attack right lane. Hachiman is calling out that he needs healing. If Thor had known that Hachiman had gone back, what Thor would have advocated for would be to fall back. Now, what's really interesting here is Maui is calling to attack the Titan. But Thor, who's saying, no, attack the right Phoenix, he's attacking the Titan, right? So this poor Merlin, who 
has absolutely no idea what's going on. He is also attacking the Titan because he's following Thor and Maui's lead right now. Because even though Thor is saying attack right lane, he is doing attack the Titan, which is what the Maui was saying. I was also saying attack the Titan. Because I genuinely think they can take it. I mean, Ardio's the only one up. Rat might be up in four seconds, but he's two levels down, right? I think they've got a legitimate shot, even though Hachiman has backed. But, if Thor had known that Hachiman had backed, he might have been making a different call than attacking right Phoenix. Now, uh, Rat ults, he's gonna wind up actually killing the Thor here, I believe. No, it's the Merlin he kills. Uh, he goes after the Merlin, he kills Merlin really quick. I'm sorry, he does not kill the Merlin here. That's late. That was before... Merlin dies here, I'm pretty sure. Merlin re-engages here. And I don't know why I'm looking this way. Nope, no, they all get out. But they take a lot of damage from the rat, and they're obviously not going to survive the, uh... Uh... You know, he barely survives the rat. I thought he killed rat here, that's my memory being a bit fuzzy. Now, Thor makes an interesting strategic mistake here, and... This is not necessarily common knowledge because of how new catapults are thor keeps advocating for attacking the right phoenix now at a basic level this is the correct choice right there's no tower in the way the phoenix is there for the taking the problem is is that damn catapult it's very very difficult to take a phoenix with a catapult behind it because basically someone has to tank and the enemy team at this point has caught up if we had tried to take the right phoenix beforehand if we tried taking the right Phoenix before they, the enemy team mostly reached level 20, this would be a different conversation. We probably could have done it, but at this particular point in time, the enemy team is now at roughly level 20, or they're getting there anyways, and it's now much riskier to do so. I don't disagree with him strongly enough. Hachiman is advocating for this same thing, but Thor can't hear this. They want to attack the Fire Giant again. Again, not necessarily a bad idea. I am nervous about the Janus ult. I'm pretty sure Janus has his ult right now. They go correctly for the Pyromancer. Great choice. We're going to move in and hopefully try to take the Fire Giant, right? There, they keep pressing, you know, they keep talking about attacking the Bright Phoenix. Again, as long as that Catapult is there, that's, a, that's going to be more difficult than it needs to be right but i don't communicate that i don't say anything that is a failing on my part i should have gone to the chat and said hey this catapult is going to make that really difficult to do let's not do that okay and i don't communicate that and i really should have now i'm going really way too hard on audio here i have no reason to be going this hard on audio right i see my allies behind me I back off a little bit because I realize, hey, what are we actually doing here? Now, I'm trying to press right now because they're all backing up. Ardio is here low. We kill her off. I think we can press this, right? Because I want to take the the Phoenix. I'm not the Phoenix, the Titan, right? So I'm going to go ahead and engage with Heimdall. He ults me. That's fine. Then I land. They take out Heimdall. That's great. Absolutely fantastic. Thor leaves for the Phoenix. Again, this is a mistake due to that catapult being there. I think he should have just gone for kills here. Just try to take people out. I'm out of mana. I can't really sustain. Hachiman dies. Once the Hachiman dies, there's nothing else really we can do here. I get surprised by minions. I was not paying enough attention. They kill Ratatoskir. I'm just trying to get out at this point. There's, you know, Janus. Don't care. Going through the door. Thor is complaining, but again, and again, Thor is complaining due to me not communicating that I have an issue with that catapult being there, and then the enemy, the, and I actually finally say something, I, I kill then catapult, I'm not really sure what was going through my mind um, there, but finally they, the enemy team pushes the catapult forward, so we finally get to deal with the catapult, I'm gonna go over there and... The catapult was absolutely an issue. He accuses me of playing Rengar on the Titan. I never was under the Titan. I do have to defend myself here. But honestly, yes. You know, the catapult is down. Now we can pretty safely take the Phoenix. I take a moment. Let the let my allies regroup. A brief spat with the accusations of Thor. It's fine. 
I decide I'm going to make a joke out of this. <laughs> that was between the birds. Almost as good as Between the Lions, I believe I say. Just like between the, being Between the Lions, that's a show reference that probably a lot of people don't know. Um, yeah, I was non-committal though, he is correct. And I should have told him why I didn't want to attack the right Phoenix. He says it wasn't going to be a problem. It was going to be a problem at that point. Now that the enemy team is caught up, it was going to be an or nearly caught up. It was going to be an issue. Uh, right now, we're just trying to poke out some people, make sure that they can't interfere with our ability to take the Titan, right? I initiate for that reason. I make a mistake. I underestimate how much damage I'm going to be taking from Heimdall. I take a lot more damage than I'm expecting, and I'm kind of getting a little nervous here. Yes, he died, but, you know, somebody could very easily just take me out. I go ahead and finish off Ardeo. We're finally going to attack this uh, Phoenix. Unfortunately, Hachiman gets killed in left lane. But he did take the tower, so not a bad thing entirely. I go on ahead and tank this because nobody else is there. I, Maui is in mid lane. I'm going to die here because I miscalculate how much Phoenix damage I'm taking. Right? That's That was entirely a miscalculation on my part. Maui is going for the mid Phoenix. Not necessarily a bad choice, but at this particular point in time... Uh, it's not likely he's going to succeed at this. Now he goes ahead and clears the disease. I don't anticipate him being able to do anything, but he leaves. I was trying to encourage him to go for the Phoenix some more. Turns out, and you can see right there with the Ratatos gear, he made the correct choice, right? Now Thor says we're throwing. He can't hear the Hachiman. He's still got Hachiman muted, right? Which is, you know, a problem. So, just... That's really one of the big problems, is really just a communication breakdown amongst the team. Thor is fairly accusatory across the game. I fail to express my concerns with attacking the right Phoenix, so I'm just as much as guilty of communication failure as anyone else is on this team. <laughs> we all have a communication problem on this team. None of us communicate correctly, right? I'm just as, Like I said, I'm just as guilty of that as everyone else on this team is. But right now, what we want to do is group up. The enemy takes the fire giant, which is a bit concerning, right? Now they're at our level. They might be down on gold by 9,000 or so. I believe it's technically 8,500 specifically, but, you know, they have fire giant buff. They're at our experience level. Hachiman wants to wait out the fire giant buff. Which is the correct uh, decision, right? We're going to go ahead and take Pyromancer really quick just because they're not here. Because obviously after they took the Fire Giant, they backed off. And I doubt the Fire Giant had spawned then. I'm not 100% sure. We take care of this. He lets me take that. I appreciate. And then we're just kind of trying to figure out what we're going to do. Now, for some bizarre reason, Maui and... Uh, Merlin, well, I know why they're going for the Gold Fury. They want the Oni Fury for the, uh, bonus, you know, the, the big minions, and we're all grouped up in the right lane. Now, actually, they make a correct point here. The three of us should have been in left jungle, right? I was, and I was about to say we don't need the Gold Fury, but I realized what they were fighting over. They were fighting for the Oni minion buff, right? And Maui's correct. We should have fought for that. We absolutely should have. That is a mistake by the three of us, Hachiman, Thor, and I. We should have been over there. Um, they fight me under tower, which is fairly interesting, because they just finished off the Gold Fury. I am absolutely able to help destroy Athena, which is a huge advantage. Now, I want to back up here. Thor goes in. Thor ults in. Kills Janus. Now, all I need is um, Heimdall dead right? Hachiman kills Heimdall. We we basically win at that point, because Heimdall was the only one doing damage to me at this point, right? So I'm just trying to save my boy here. Uh, I I failed to do that, but we kill everyone except Ratatoskir. Now, this is still a win for us, because that means only Ratatoskir now has the Fire Giant buffs. So that was overall a win for us. They may have gotten the tower, but we have removed almost all of their Fire Giant buffs, and we now have the ability to, for free, clear the Oni minions, okay? we That was a huge win for us. They wasted, with the exception of Ratatoskir, they've wasted all of their benefits, 
everything that they had over us, they just lost. This is absolutely fantastic for us. I'm about to massively beef myself up with this uh, potion of whatever here. So I'm about to get nice and beefy here. And they're pushing up mid lane. Now they're pushing up mid lane a little too early. Uh, they are just a bit too eager for this considering the enemy team has fully respawned at this point or just about has. Uh, RDO just now respawned. They finally group up. I'm going to teleport in. I teleport in a little ahead of them because I just kind of want to see what's going on. I meet Athena. That's fine. She, The fact that she backs off means she doesn't have a ton of people around. Here's Heimdall, right? I go ahead and ult because, again, if I can just take out Heimdall or if Heimdall dies, I'm pretty much golden. I go on to uh, Ardeo. Deal some damage to her. I hear Ratatos here. I know he's spooky for a lot of people. I try to take out him. I'm just trying to do as much damage as possible while avoiding Heimdall because until Heimdall dies, I'm in danger, right? You know, Thor kills Ratatos here. Janos is just out of the picture, so we're going to ignore him in favor of helping the team. And here is Heimdall, all nice and exposed. He dies. Amen. And now we're just going to go in. Maui is fortunately in really good condition. He can tank the Phoenix. He is keeping the RDO off. Great decision making by the Maui, by the way. You know, attacking her to maintain the Phoenix's attention. It's just Janos. He hits really hard, but at this particular point, he's not going to be enough. He doesn't have the ability to stop us all. He probably can kill Thor at this point, who I believe dies right before the end of the match to the Titan anyways. But ultimately doesn't make a huge difference either way. Yeah. And Merlin dies, but we win the match anyways. Now, again, this is... Actually, I can let this run out while I wait for it to get to the the win screen so I can talk about the itemization. But this is, you know, this is exactly what a solo lane wants to do. Get really beefy in the solo lane, rotate to mid, help slap down and dominate the mid lane, and then from there, carry the team until the rest of them can catch up, right? That is very specifically what a solo laner wants to do. This was a textbook example of what a solo lane wants to do. That is what a solo lane really, really wants to have happen, right? It was a great game for me. It was a great game for most of the team, actually. Some of them had a really rough early game. I fell off a little in the late game. That's pretty standard for solo laners, right? Once the uh, ADC comes online, typically the solo laner is going to take a couple of tumbles. That's fairly classic. You could see you could see the point at which I started to be unable to go 1v1 against Heimdall. You can see that period of time. That's pretty damn important. Uh, part of this is the fact that he built Executioner really late, and Executioner is the big answer for ADCs against tanks, right? It's the item, that and Shin Size. Right, and he built these two items last. Building Shin Size fifth makes sense. Executioner being that late is a bit interesting. Um... I personally would have built it fourth. Maybe that's, you know, I don't know what the circumstances were in that lane, so that might have been his better option. I don't know. I wasn't there, right? But you could you could see the points at which I stopped being able to fight him 1v1 up to the point where I was pretty actively trying to dodge him in the last match. That's that's not too unusual for solo laners. I could have counterbuilt him, but at that particular point in time, it wasn't supremely necessary. If we'd lost that last fight, I probably would have had to have counter built him very, very hard. I probably would have built... I would have probably dropped um, Brawler's Beat Stick in favor of Contagion if I... if we had lost that last team fight, right? But all along the way, you can see, you know, again, I've covered all three of these and also why I went to Bulwark. Mystical Mail is just very powerful on Guan Yu. Again, I was really ahead when I built this, and I wanted to really capitalize on that being ahead with a bit more damage. Kind of the same thing with Pridwin. Again, all both of these items, as well as Glad Shield, actually, hell, all of these items work really well with Guan Yu, specifically in the context of Taolu Assault. Brawler's Beat Stick was a bit of an arrogance move on my part, I'll fully admit. I probably should have built more protections. I probably wouldn't have died so often if I had... Uh, I didn't strictly need this. I 
like I said, I probably could have gotten away with either Pestilence or Contagion here. Probably would have been the better choice, or some more protections of some kind. I probably should have built something more in that particular line. But, you know, I went with the power play here. I went with the Brawler's Beat Stick. Again, I was still very ahead at that point. This is also why I would have swapped this out for Contagion if we'd lost that last team fight, because by that point, the enemy team would have fully caught up to us in terms of golden experience. You can see they all had full builds, so they had caught up with us in terms of golden experience. So it would have been, at that point, required for me to respect the Raditas gear and Ardeo's ability to decrease my protections and actually do something about it, right? That would have been a need more than a want at that point. So I would have made that... That's why I would have made that swap after that if we lost that last fight, right? Because at that point, I would have needed the protections more than I would have needed the damage from this. But that's what was going on in my mind there. Of course, I upgrade to the... Uh, the Sundering Axe, I think it is, whichever one that is, as I stated I would, as I have stated before, is very, very good on Guan Yu, um, so there is that. Now, I do want to take a brief moment to talk about the Ardeo's build, because it took the Ardeo, and even the Athena, a very long time to sort of become aware of how important it is to interrupt my Taolu Assault, and even in some of those last team fights, they did nothing to stop that, right? Guan Yu isn't the only warrior with such a devastating ability either. Bologna's hammer swing also hits extremely hard, especially in the early to mid game. And it's pretty important a lot of the times, especially in the early to mid game, to interrupt that as well. And a lot of warriors have an ability like this. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Some of them have a combo, such as Hercules with his... his pull-push combo, right? As an example. But, when you have, as I stated when during the conversation about Ardeo's mistakes early on in the match, she has a stun. She can stun me out of every other Taolu Assault. It's just a matter of which one she picks, the one going after her or the one going after her minions. She has to make a choice there, but she can stop one of those. Generally speaking, which one depends on the amount of wave clear you've got? Ardeo has great wave clear, so she really didn't need to press me too hard on that one. What she should have done is let me Taolu Assault the waves and then go after me in a in a fight, right? She should have targeted me after she'd cleared the wave because she has better wave clear than I do, at least on paper, because theoretically speaking, you build Ardeo correctly. You run through the wave, you transform into the human form, and then you use your little Drano beam on the wave after the fact while you're behind the archers. That is ideally what you do. Uh, because she built Stone of Gaia as her second item rather than some form of damage, she couldn't do that. Well, okay, she could still pull off the combo, but it wasn't going to kill the wave, okay? And that's a very important thing. Most of her issues in that lane stem from two specific mistakes. One, she very rarely stunned me out of Taolu Assault when she was fully capable of doing so. Now, she waited until level 3 to get that stun. That's fine. That's usually how you build... That's usually how you level Ardeo in the solo lane. That's standard form. That's fine. There's a reason for that. Her second ability is the only one that doesn't do damage in either form. Right? And she wants that wave clear. She wants that ability to fight. Doesn't build the stun until the third level. That's totally fine. The issue is she almost never used it to stop Taolu Assault when she needed to. Her second problem was her second item was not something that gave her damage. She needed damage. She did eventually build Spear of the Magus. Spear of the Magus should have been her second item. Okay, it's going to give her increased lifesteal, which is some of that sustain she's looking for. If she builds the Hourglass as her first item, she doesn't even have that much mana issues, but even with the gemstone there that she had originally, it's still some MP5. Not enough for Ardeo specifically, but some. So she would have had some mana regen. She would have had the lifesteal from the Spear the Magus, she would have had the lifesteal built into her kit, she would have had 110 power that she could use to accelerate wave clear with, she probably would have been able to do the 
bear dash into drain beam combo and kill the wave, probably. Secondly, her third item for some unholy reason is the grossly overrated Warlock Staff. Again, I just want to emphasize that Warlock Staff only gives you 225 max HP. Yes, it gives you 130 power, but for 40 less power and 50 less HP, you can get E-Staff, and then that passive gives you more HP in the long run anyways. I don't get it. Anyways, she builds Warlock Staff, and she builds it as a third item, which is going to be a little late anyways. Even Warlock's Staff as a second item would have been a better choice than Stone of Gaia, but it's due to these two errors. The the consistently not stunning me out of Taolu Assault, and Stone of Gaia very specifically being her second item, these are why she lost that lane. She could still have won the lane if she'd built the Gemstone plus some form of decent damage, such as Spirit the Magus, which again is my favorite item to use here. In her situation, I would have picked that up immediately. But... Generally speaking, Stone of Gaia was not the move. Now, Spear the Magus is particularly useful against Guan Yu because, again, he wants that minion poke. So, by increasing the amount of damage that minion poke is doing by 7%, you make that... You force consequences on that decision, right? Spear the Magus is incredible against Guan Yu. Very specifically for that reason. Second, well, a third minor mistake, not as serious as the other two was that she would let me poke me whenever at after a very short period of time that stopped being relevant because i could just clear the wave so fast that it didn't matter but generally speaking when you are against a guan yu don't let him poke you when the minions are up because he wants that so he can build those fearless passive stacks faster right so if the minions are up don't let guan yu poke you all right, it sounded a, that was a really weird sentence to say, but don't let it happen. All right, she let it happen in the first couple of waves, and that was a mistake. Okay, but that is generally why I did so well against Ardio, who normally is a fair enough matchup with Guan Yu normally, but again, never stunned me out of Tableau Assault, built Stone of Gaia as your second item. All right, and therein lies the actual issue. The primary issue with that, right? So, hopefully, you got a lot out of this episode. It's it's been quite a long episode. Again, we could have easily finished that. I would estimate at this particular point a good five minutes. We could have finished that earlier uh, if we just had a bit better communication. Again, I am just as responsible for that failure of communication. I had opportunities to very clearly state why I had an issue with going after the right Phoenix, why I didn't think it was a good idea. I did not state these early enough. 100% my fault. It was 100% my choice. It is 100% my fault to not speak about it, right? Totally me. But hopefully you learned a lot this episode uh, I, again i think this is the, going to be the greatest example of what a solo lane wants to accomplish in a match uh, generally speaking i think i'll be hard pressed to create an episode that better represents this because i'm not necessarily sure how often i'm going to have such a breakdown in team communications that they fail try and fail to surrender <laughs> before i come online right um, so this is a great visualization just due to all the really weird circumstances, so hopefully you found this very useful, at least at that standpoint, but yeah, this is supposed to be a, you know, well this is I guess part of the updated beginner's guide, so it's fine, but either way, you know, thank you all very much for joining me uh, for this. If you liked this, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, please ignore me. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, or requests, please leave them down in the comment section below. And thank you all very much for joining me, and have a great 24 hours.